Good morning, church. Can y'all hear me out there? All right, wonderful. Y'all ready to hear the word of God this morning? Awesome, awesome, awesome. You probably don't know this, but in the mornings, we do a lot of things in preparation for service. And one of the things that we do in the technical world is something called a mic check. Now, a mic check is basically when you get the person using the microphone for the day to test it. And when we do that, we're checking for levels and for sound quality. Now, you might be thinking, why am I telling you this? Because the question that I asked you a few moments ago was low-key, not a mic check, but a heart check. And I was checking for levels too. I was checking for levels of expectation because I know that what you get out of today's message isn't just about how well I preach and teach the message, but it's also about your level of expectation. It's also about the position of your heart. It's about your readiness to receive something today that's going to help you grow in your faith. So with that being said, let me ask you again, are you ready for the word of God this morning? All right. There we go. Good, good. Today we launch a new series called Off the Grid. And my first, my first point today is basically the overarching theme of this entire series. And that first point is this. In order to grow in God, you're going to have to be intentional and break your rhythm of busy. You're going to have to be intentional and, and, and break away from the daily task and the weekly task in order to make time for God and the things of God you're gonna have to go off the grid. And what I wanna talk to you about today specifically is something that we all need. Everyone in this room, everyone watching online, something that we all need, but sometimes we fail to get. And that thing is rest. Rest. That four letter word, rest. And church, I got a good chuckle and laugh here. When I started to realize that you can take the four letters in the word rest, and rearrange them and begin to spell the word stress. Now, notice I said begin to spell, right? I know we need a couple more S's here to make that work, but just follow me for a second. That idea led me to this thought. Is it possible that our failure to rest is contributing to our levels of stress in our lives? Could it be that our inability to manage our time and to work rhythms of rest into our lives, could that be contributing to our levels of stress? Our levels of physical stress, emotional stress, mental stress, spiritual stress. See, church, that brings me to my title today, which is simply this, rest or stress. Rest or stress. Now, I know we don't normally do this, but just tell the person that you're sitting next to today, just tell them you choose. You choose. Go ahead, talk to your neighbor, tell them, you choose. Rest or stress, you choose. Okay? I want to start off today by looking at where rest was first mentioned in the Bible. Okay? We're going to be reading from Genesis. If you're following along with your Bible or mobile device and you need help finding the book of Genesis, please come to the altar for prayer. (laughs) Just kidding. I'm just kidding, but Genesis is the first book in the Bible, right? And we're going to read from chapter 2, starting at verse 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, let's put a pin in that for for a second, church, and we're going to read two more passages really quickly. We're going to check out Isaiah 40 and 28, and we're going to check out Psalms 121, 3 through 4. So Isaiah 40 and 28 says, The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Now, Psalms 121, 3 through 4, He will not let your foot slip, He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So church, when we consider these three passages together, it would be reasonable for us to ask the question, why did God rest? Why would a God who does not sleep, 
A God who does not get tired or weary, rest. See, church, I think that's important that we answer this question today to the best of our ability. And I think that in doing so, it's going to help us put the right value to rest. It's going to help us put the right importance to rest. Now, the first and probably the most obvious answer is that God rested because he was finished with all the work that he had done. But see, church, I believe that there's more here. And in order for us to see that more, we have to understand and consider that God is an intentional God, okay? Meaning that nothing he does by accident. Everything that he does, he does on purpose because he is an intentional God. So think about this for a second, church. The Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. He created all of creation in six days and rested on the seventh. Now, couldn't God have created all of creation in one day? Think about that. Yes, right? Because he's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. But instead, he, des he, 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 he desired to make it span across several days. And because God is an intentional God, there has to be a reasoning there. There has to be a reasoning. Now, church, obviously I wasn't there, right? And you weren't there. Okay, and quick side note, uh, last week, not last week, two weeks ago, Pastor Adam talked about heaven. He talked about how the Bible describes heaven, and he also talked about what he hopes is in heaven. So really quick, I want to tell you what I hope is in heaven, okay? I hope that in heaven there are movie theaters, okay? Yeah. And I, I'm not looking for them to show my favorite Marvel movies or my favorite Pixar movies or my favorite Disney movies. I'm hoping that in these movie theaters, you can see the Bible stories, like you can see how they actually happen, like you can go watch them. I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you like to see how David really killed Goliath, like see that really come to, come, come, come to life? But honestly, church, if that was the case, the, the story or this movie that I'll be most excited to see is this very story, the creation story. Right? So I'm not, I wasn't there, you weren't there, and the Bible also says that as high as the heaven is above the earth, so is God's thoughts above ours. Meaning that we can try to imagine this thing, but we're never gonna come close. So I know that God's getting ready to laugh at me right now because I try to imagine what God looked like thinking through creation, okay? This is God thinking through creation. Okay, so I need to create a being that's gonna be the object of my love. And this being needs a world, and this world's gotta be outside of my eternal home. It's gotta be outside of eternity. So let me make something. Um, time, time, I like the sound of that. It's got a nice ring to it, time, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're gonna have to have a way to measure this thing, so let me create two great lights. A, a greater light to govern the day, that's the sun, and a lesser light to govern the night, that's the moon, and the earth's gonna rotate around the sun, let me see, 15 hours? No, not 15, 23, 24, I like that, 24 hours. It's gonna take 24 hours to make a day, yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, I, and the, world, the world is gonna adopt seven days as a week, yeah. So you know what, I can do this in one day because I'm that bad, I'm that bad, I could do this in one day, but I'm gonna do this in six days and rest on one to be an example to my people. Why else, church, would a God who does not get tired rest? God not only rested because his work was done, but God rested to be an example to us, his people. He wanted to make sure we understood that, yes, it's important to produce. Yes, it's important to create, but it's also important to rest. I don't know if you know this, you're a producer. You are a creator. It was, it was part of the command that God gave Adam from the very beginning. So no matter what your, your career is or what stage of life you are in, you are producing, you are creating, you're creating memories. If you are a parent, you're depositing things into your kids. You're creating legacy. You are a producer. But not only is it important to produce, to produce, to produce, and to create, it's also important to rest, church, to rest. Rest is so important that God put it in the Ten Commandments. Let me show it to you. We're going to read from Exodus, verse, uh, chapter 20, verse 8. It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and on it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. He set this church right before he said, honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's goods. He said to rest before he said all those things. See, rest is so important that God demonstrated it, demonstrated it in creation and put it in the Ten Commandments reflected in the Sabbath. God also embedded rest or embedded the need for rest into our physiology. We can't function without rest. Without sleep, our, our brain, brain can't recuperate. We can't perform optimally without rest. See, some of y'all would be a little bit more Christian, just a little bit more Christ-like, just if you got a good night rest. See, church, they know about this in my house, okay? Because I am the family's grump, okay? It's me, right? I am the family's grump. My wife has to be, she knows she has to be particular about what she wakes me up for. And she's got to be particular about how she wakes me up. She's got a down pack now. She rubs my back. She talks to me nice and soft, babe, babe, babe. Because church, I don't know what it is. When I'm tired, I just have a little less peace, a little less patience, a little less love, a little less humility. I need rest to be my best. I know it rhymes. It sounds cliche, but it's true. You need rest to be your best. See, God embedded the need for it into our very physiology, even when it comes to our muscles. Not only what you do on your exercise day is important. Some of you are like, like, exercise day, what's that? <laughs> Not only what you do on your exercise day is important, but also what you do on your rest day. Because it's during the exercise that the muscles get broken down, but it's during the rest day that the muscles recover and grow stronger. So God embedded the very need for it into our physiology. He demonstrated it in creation. He put it in the Ten Commandments, and again, he embedded it into our very physiology. Now, I want to talk to you some more about the Sabbath. Now, to this day, the Sabbath is still kept in the Jewish culture, okay? Now, it starts on Friday evening and ends on Saturday evening. Now, hear me when I say this, church. The Sabbath was given to Israel not to the church. The Sabbath is part of the Old Testament covenant, covenant, but we are under a new covenant. So meaning that Christians today are not required to keep the Sabbath, meaning there's not a specific day for the rest of your life every week that you have to rest and do nothing. Okay? Now let me give you some scriptural basis for this. Oh, actually, before I get there, I haven't been to Israel, but I heard a pastor talk about this. If you were to go to Israel and go to a hotel or a resort and they have elevators, on the Sabbath day, that, those elevators would stop on every single floor, okay? Because for them, for you to lift your hand to press the button is work. And they don't want you to do no work. So on the Sabbath, they make sure the elevator stops on every single floor. That's how serious it is for them. That's how serious it is for them. But for us today, as Christians, we're not required to keep the Sabbath. So here's the scriptural basis for that. Um, we're going to read two verses from the book of Acts, chapter 15. Um, but before, before we get there, let me give you the backstory, okay? So you got to realize that when the church was first birthed, the first Christians were Jews, Right? And then when the gospel started going out, non-Jews, which the Bible calls Gentiles, were also being converted. They were also coming to know the Lord. 
And so this kind of created the dilemma because the Jewish Christians were thinking, well, these Gentiles should keep the law. So they had to have a conversation about what should the Gentiles observe from the law. So the apostles and the elders, they met. And the verses that we're going to read today are basically the conclusion of that conversation. And this is James speaking. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Okay, so they didn't want to make it difficult for the non-Christians or the non-Jews that are turning to God. He said, instead, we should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. So what you find in verse 20 are the things that the, the apostles and the elders determined that the Gentiles should still observe. But notice that in verse 20, you don't see the Sabbath keeping. If the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath is something that as believers today that we are supposed to keep, you would more likely find the Sabbath mentioned in verse 20, okay? But it's not because Christians today are not required to keep the Sabbath. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't rest, but what I am saying is that we don't have to be caught up in the legalism of the day. Jesus himself did not get caught up in the legalism of the day. He did some miracles on the Sabbath. Remember when he told the lame man to get up and walk? So Jesus doing the miracle is considered work, and also the lame man getting up and walking is considered work. So the legalism of the day did not matter to Jesus. So even though, even though we're not required to keep the Sabbath, that still doesn't negate, though, the importance of rest. Jesus knew the importance of rest. Jesus took naps. He went away. Jesus was so good at resting that he went to sleep during a storm. Y'all remember that? <laughs> I mean, he was on a boat with his disciples. The Bible says that a storm came, the waves came over the boat. And what was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Some of us can't even go to sleep with the TV on, but Jesus is sleeping through a boisterous storm. What does Jesus know that we don't know? <laughs> but the Sabbath day does speak to something for us as believers today. It is a foreshadowing of Jesus becoming our Sabbath rest. So because of the work of the cross, there is a spiritual rest that we get to enter into. Let's read from Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. It says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. And here's why. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. So the reality of the Sabbath for us as believers today is found in Christ. It is a spiritual rest. Hebrews 4 and 9 says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest. That's interesting. Make every effort. Why is the Bible telling us that? Because we're going to have to be intentional. We're going to have to be cognizant to make every effort to rest. There's so many opportunities, so many things in life pulling at us, and sometimes we can forget to rest. You would think that would be effortless. Now, jumping back to verse 10, for, for anyone who enters God's rest also rest from their works just as God did from his. What does that mean? That means that we no longer have to work our way into heaven. Salvation is a gift. It's by grace through faith. It doesn't mean that we use grace as a license to live any old kind of way, but we don't have to work our way into heaven. That is the work that we cease when we enter into God's rest. It also means that we no longer have to try to execute our plan and our will for our lives, but we can rest and accept God's plan and God's will for our lives, the Sabbath rest of God. Now, church, I've talked about a lot. 
I've talked about rest from a natural standpoint. I've talked about rest from a spiritual standpoint. It's, it's for you to determine what kind of rest are you lacking in your life? Because in order to grow in God, you're going to have to be intentional and break your rhythm of busy and rest. So maybe you're the person who you have the perspective that I'll rest when I get there. I got dreams, I got vision, I got goals, things I got to accomplish. And until I do those things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to produce, 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 create, create, create. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm not resting. But God is saying, you got you to gotta have balance. You got to take a break. If you don't take a break, you going to break. If you don't break, something in your life might break. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your relationship with your kids. We have to take a break. It's important for you to understand that God is able to give you wisdom. And what you would normally do in seven days, God can give you wisdom and you can do it in five or six days. But I tell you what, though, that wisdom may not come while you're going, 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 just like the Energizer Bunny, just going, 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 going. That wisdom probably is not going to come while you're going, 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 going. It's going to come when you walk in obedience and you rest. And God's going to say, oh, I see my child resting. Let me bless them with some wisdom. That wisdom is going to get deposited when you be obedient to God and rest. Now, maybe, maybe that's not you in here today. That's not your issue. Your issue is not that you go, 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 go. Your issue is what's robbing you of your rest is the fact that you, you up all night watching Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus. I can mention all those because I got all of those myself. <laughs> and everybody in my house got, a sc- got screen time because if we don't, we, it can get out of hand really quick, but maybe that's your thing. Instead of resting, you're up all night, playing video games, talking on the phone with your friends. I'm trying so hard not to look at my wife right now. (laughs) Trying so hard, let me come over here, let me come over here. (laughs) Maybe that's it for you. And what you need more of is discipline. Discipline. God is saying you need to convert some of that screen time to me time. You need to turn that device off, no more scrolling on social media after a certain point, and just rest. Rest. There might be some of you in here where you don't have, you don't have no issues with laying down on time. You can go to bed on time, but when you do, it's hard for you to disconnect All you can think about is what you didn't do today or what you did do today or what needs to be done tomorrow and you just can't disconnect and that's what's robbing you of your rest. That's what's robbing you of your sleep. And what you need more of is peace. You need God's peace to come over you. You you need to be able to cast your cares and burdens on him and disconnect and rest. Rest. Maybe you're in here today and what you're lacking in your life isn't the natural rest. You're, you're missing the spiritual rest. You, you haven't surrendered to God and haven't allowed uh, his will to be the thing that you're really trying to bring forth in his life. You're still trying to execute your plan for your life. You're still trying to work your way into heaven when you need to surrender and just submit to God's plan for your life and just rest in him. So as always, church, what's being taught from this stage isn't just for your information. What's being taught from this stage is to move you to a place of application. So we all have a question to answer today, and that is, What do you need more of to be able to have a healthy rhythm of rest in your life? Do you need more wisdom? Do you need more discipline? 
Do you need more peace? Do you need more obedience? What is it that you need to be able to have a healthy rhythm of rest in your life? In a moment, I'm going to pray for you. Pray for everyone. But before I get there, I just want you to think about that for a little bit. Put that, put that thing on your heart. What is it that you need? What is it that you need? Because I know one thing about God. He's able to supply all of our needs. And so many times when we, we think about that scripture, we think about our material things. We think about our physical needs. We don't think about what we need spiritually. Church, let's pray. God, before we ask you of anything this morning, we're going to just first acknowledge who you are. You are the everlasting God. You are he who created the heavens and the earth. He who formed us in our mother's womb. He who loved us before we even knew what love was. You loved loved us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. Perfection, divinity, wrapped up in imperfect flesh, came to this earth, dwelt among us, and gave his life for us. That is the God that we're coming to this morning. And you know what each of us need, Lord God. Everybody in this room today, everybody watching online, you know what we need. And as we put that on our hearts before you, Lord God, I pray that you would supply all of our needs, Lord God. Our help comes from you, Lord. You said if we lack wisdom, we can ask for it. If it's wisdom, Lord, give it to us. If it's discipline, Lord, give it to us. Peace, Lord, we all need peace. Your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. Give it to us, Jesus. If it's obedience, Lord, give it to us. Lord, and if there's anyone in here today that has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, I'm asking that you touch their hearts right now, Lord. You impress something on their hearts right now, Lord God. I pray that they would begin to feel your presence, the overwhelming presence of your love, and that you would begin to turn their heart towards you, Jesus. Turn their hearts towards you, Jesus. Do only what you can do. Hallelujah, Jesus. I hear the Lord saying that he's been speaking to to so many of you. But we're we're distracted by all of the cares of the world that we're not hearing God on on everything that he's trying to speak to us on. God, God wants us to slow down. So many times we're asking God for more. We're asking him for answers and he wants to get it to us, but we're just moving too fast. We got too much going on. Thank you for your presence, Lord, your sweet presence that's in this place.
Church, I want to lead those making the decision today to accept the Lord Jesus through a prayer. And if you're already a believer, please join us supporting those that are making this decision today. Repeat after me. Father, we thank you for the work of the cross. We thank you for your great love. And our response to that love is to love you back, Jesus. To give you all of our lives. We surrender it to you now, Jesus. And from this day forth, I will never be the same again. I am becoming the person that you have called me to be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, church. Can we put our hands together for those that have made that decision today?